crackle, clump, snap, as though they spoke, the amber logs illuminating Shua's campsite spat these words into the night air. The crackles, clumps, and snaps joined the chirping crickets and filled Shua's ears with happiness. She shut her almond eyes, inhaling the sweet smell of burning birch and recalling how she almost didn't get to come on the camping trip. Shua is not going, her grandfather had announced during dinner. While her brother and father unmoved by his words, Shua and her mother gasped. I turned 11 two months ago, Shua whimpered, twirling her hair with her pointer finger. She twirled her jet black hair when she was scared nervous or anxious. Right now, she was all three. Her grandfather ignored her and continued dipping his mung sausage in hot pepper sauce before stuffing it in his mouth. She can collect firewood for you, pleaded Shua's mother, passing the plate of mung sausages to Shua after placing a link on her own plate. She'll be in the way, countered Shua's father. Shua hated it when grown-ups talked about her as though she was invisible. She also hated it when they made decisions for her and said silly things like, Don't eat the third donut. It's not good for you. Followed by, You're just too young to understand now. When you get older, you'll know why I said no. Grown-ups underestimated kids. If, she wondered, she held a neon sign with the words, I'm still here on it. Would grown-ups stop talking about her as she wasn't there? Shua thought her family underestimated her, not because she was a child, but because of something else. No one suspected that underneath her shyness, she was a volcano of courage, brilliance, and magic ready to erupt. What was this disguise that fooled everyone in not seeing Shua's true self? It was nothing more than she was a girl. One day she would show them all her true self, Shua thought, as her lips curled into a feline smile. The sound of leaves rustling in the wind pulled Shua out of her sleeping bag, out of the tent, and into the blazing colorful night sky. Her mouth opened in a big O as she tilted her head and stared at the heavens. Streaks of red and blue lines danced across the sky. The dancing lights reminded Shua of neon cotton candy moving across a black blanket. Even the crickets seemed to stop chirping to watch the lights. Shua was the first to come out of her tent and the men trickled out of the tents after her. It's dragons, exclaimed Shua's grandfather, hopping excitedly and pointing at the lights. When we see lights moving across the heavens like this, it means dragons have come out of hiding and are about to come to earth. Her grandfather often told tales of dragons, explaining how the magical creatures traveled between the human world and spirit world. The lights are called the War Borealis, or Northern Lights, offered Mr. Grimm, caused by energetic charged particles colliding with atoms in a high altitude atmosphere. Zong agreed with Mr. Grimm, adding, I read that in a book. There are no dragons in those lights, barked Sang. Shua watched her grandfather's face turn from pure bliss to disappointment. His mouth opened to say something, and then closed tightly. Grandfather, I don't see the dragons in the dancing light, but I know they're in there, Shua squeaked like a mouse at her grandfather's feet. Shua's words were the bomb on his hurt ego. Mr. Grimm and Sang's constant criticism about everything Mong eroded her grandfather's spirit. But, as his glum face glanced towards her, she felt he would have preferred Song defending him instead of his granddaughter, Shua. 
the peaceful night sky changed with the sound of thunder. Bolts of lightning splattered through the dancing lights. The wind changed and howled like a hungry wolf, threatening to blow over the tent. The red and blue lights swirled in a colossal cloud before opening up like a curtain. Suddenly, a flaming ball danced and raced towards the earth like a comet. It came out of the curtain of lights. Shua instinctively clutched her grandfather's trembling hands. The ball of flames raced towards the campsite. Mr. Grimm shook his head in disbelief and gasped, Oh man, I hate camping. Sang Zong and their father held on to each other tightly. The flaming ball looked like it was going to plow right into the campsite. But at the last moment, it moved higher in the sky and passed over them, leaving behind a trail of smoke and disappearing in the black forest. There were no crickets chirping, no crackling from the fire, only the sound of their heaving breaths. Shua twirled her hair as she sprinted towards the trombone moans. Her heart filled with victory and her head filled with images of her grandfather complimenting her for finding the fireball. Zong couldn't keep up because of his heavy backpack, which was filled with food, a flashlight, and his wildlife book. His heart and head were filled with fear. They jogged until they came to a clearing among the grove of northern pines. The flaming ball had charred the pines and rocks in its path. In the middle of the clearing was a giant hole the size of a truck. Shua raced towards the hole. Wait, Shua! Zong cried. You don't know what's inside. Shua didn't hear his words. The mystery of the hole pulled her legs forward. Shua stopped at the edge and began to twirl her hair in excitement. Zong was completely out of breath when he reached her. Shua clasped in amazement as she peered into the black hold. A smile extended across her face, practically touching her ears. With shimmery gold scales on its belly and emerald scales covering the rest of its body, the dragon was curled in the center of the hole. The creature resembled a colossal eel with two strong arms and legs. The dragon laid on its side with its quivering arms covering its belly. Its eyes glowed with amber and it blinked with its long brown lashes. Shua saw her reflection and something else, fear in the dragon's eyes. She locked eyes with the creature and tried to communicate with it telepathically like she did with the bear earlier in the woods. I can't believe it, grandfather's right, Zong yelled. Shua had forgotten about her younger brother during the excitement of finding the dragon. The fireball that fell last night? It wasn't a star, said Shua. It was a dragon curled in a ball. Dragons are not in my Minnesota wildlife book, Zong replied. Zong's loud voice frightened the dragon, who quivered in response. Shua cupped her brother's chin in her hand, pulled his face towards her, and gazed deeply in his eyes. He was silenced by her stare. After monitoring and the situation, she slipped down the hole to the dragon. Zong frantically gasped for Shua, not wanting her to go in the hole, but his hands only captured ear. She landed elegantly on the char earth with the grace of a dancer. She extended her hand to the dragon, who sniffed it. Confident the creature was comfortable, Shua kneeled and gently stroked its scaly nostril. The dragon's nose was as cold as glacier ice and smooth as silk. She looked deeper into the dragon's eyes and connected with the creature. She then moved her hand and stroked the dragon's icy cheeks. 
fear evaporated from the dragon's forlorn eyes, replaced with hope. It slowly moved its hands away from its covered belly. That's when Shua saw the large cut in its stomach. Golden blood trickled from that cut. Help me, the dragon whispered to Shua. Help me.